Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought a very interesting problem. This is a problem from 200 more puzzling problems and it was also asked in All India Test Series of a Coaching Institute recently and some of the students were facing some difficulty doing this one and therefore I decided to do a video analysis of this problem. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the problem. So here's the problem. Okay. So the problem is that there is a very small hole let me use another color okay there is a very small hole in a totally enclosed heated furnace outside the fu heated furnace okay and outside the furnace the air temperature is 0 degree celsius so let's say this is the furnace i've shown three just for the aesthetics uh, but there's only one furnace okay so let's say this is a furnace and here the outside temperature is given as how much outside temperature is uh, 0 degree celsius so outside temperature is 0 degree celsius and inside the furnace, the temperature is 57 degrees Celsius. So here the temperature is 57 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the air inside the, okay. So outside air temperature is 0 degrees Celsius and air pressure outside is 100 kilopascal. So here outside the 100 kilopascal pressure is there. Okay. And, uh, okay. Uh, the air inside the furnace is kept at a constant temperature of 57 degrees Celsius by a controlled heating system. After a sufficiently long time, its pressure also becomes steady. Calculate to the nearest integer the magnitude of the steady pressure. Assume the hole to be smaller than the free path. Okay. So we have to comment on the final uh, pressure inside the fur uh, furnace. Okay. And uh, this hole again is very, very tiny. Uh, and <laughs> just for aesthetics, I've shown it a bigger hole, but uh, it's supposed to be very, very tiny, maybe of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 meter something like that you can imagine okay so if you want you can give it a try i'll get into the analysis of the problem right away okay so let's see so uh now apparently uh it looks like if the furnace has got a hole and outside pressure is let us say p naught then why not the pressure inside will be p naught actually pressure inside would have been p naught if the hole would have been sufficiently large but the thing is uh, we cannot assume that air to be flow uh, be continuously flowing liquid uh, or fluid uh, uh, in this arrangement. Why? Because the hole is very, very tiny. So what's the mechanism uh, of uh, gases coming, gas coming and uh, going inside is that the particles are randomly colliding with the vessel walls and some uh, particle will also come. And if there were no hole, then it would have collided with the hole. But then if there is nothing over there, container wall is missing over there, then in the same momentum, it will come outside that hole, right? So number of the particles that's uh, coming out from this, let us say this whole area is e, A, then it will be uh, equal to the collision frequency uh, from the, at the inside wall, collision happening per unit time per unit area multiplied by the area of the hole. So that will be the number of particles coming outside, okay. But since the steady state is achieved, that means what? The number of particles going inside this hole will be exactly equal to the number of particles coming outside this hole. And again, I would say it's not a Bernoulli kind of situation where steady flow is happening like that. It's a randomly some particles come and they go out and randomly some particles from air, they come and they go inside. Okay. So two way kind of uh, transfer transport is happening here. Okay. So that's what I've written here. It might appear that the inside and outside pressure will be equal. However, that the size of the hole is less than the mean free path of the gas particles. Okay. And this is not a case of uh, flow. Uh, fluid flow. Uh, I just I got a dyslexia seems uh, free. Okay, this is the word is free, so I I can't read my own writing. Okay, so this is a case. This is not a case of free flow in a streamlined flow kind of a situation. Rather, here the gas particles fall into the hole under the action of random motion, and then they may enter or exit. Okay. Now, what is the collision frequency per unit area? Uh, some days back, I did a proof of this. And I'll try to give the link to that video uh, in uh, in the description box of this video uh, where I had derived the collision frequency uh, for a gas. So now recall that collision frequency per unit area of gas is given as uh, number of collisions per unit area is particle density into average speed divided by 4. So I had proved this one. Okay, this was proved in a previous video. Here V average is the average particle speed and eta is the particle density. Okay. And in equilibrium, what will happen? In equilibrium, the incoming particle frequency must be equal to the outgoing particle. Uh, outgoing particle frequency should have been, I don't know, I'm sleep deprived. Okay. Particle frequency. Okay. Okay. So, eta in V in by 4, if you want, you can multiply by the area of the hole, should be equal to eta out V out divided by 4. Because this is the formula for collision frequency, right? 
and also we know that by ideal gas law pressure is equal to eta into boltzmann constant into temperature so this is fa fairly simple you all of you know that pv is equal to nrt right so that means what p is equal to number of moles per unit volume into r into t and number of moles can always be written as number of particles divided by avogadro number right and r upon avogadro number will become the uh, this boltzmann constant so so this is nothing but another form of writing the ideal gas law p, p is equal to eta kt here so particle density eta will then be given by eta is equal to p by kt so this is my equation number 3 and I also know that average speed of the particles is proportional to the square root of temperature, right? Because kinetic energy is proportional to temperature and that's also proportional to speed square, right? So V is proportional to root of temperature. So from here, I can put uh, eta in terms of uh, pressure and temperature and uh, I can also put velocity in terms of uh, temperature, okay? So let's see how this equation transforms, okay? So using these two facts that eta is P by KT and speed is proportional to square root of uh, temperature. So here I am putting instead of eta in, I am putting what? P inside, eta in is the inside uh, density, okay? So pressure inside upon K and temperature inside. So that's what I put here for eta in and anyway 4 doesn't matter, it gets cancelled on both sides. And instead of V inside, I put, put square root of temperature inside, right? Uh, because the proportionality constants are going to be same on both sides. So I didn't bother to write the proportionality constant. So P inside into square root of T inside divided by K times T inside should be equal to P outside. The square root of temperature outside divided by K times temperature outside. And now, of course, this will become, uh, you can take under root uh, and cancel one under root. And rearrange, so that gives you inside pressure is outside pressure into square root of inside temperature uh, upon uh, uh, outside temperature, right? Now, this is the formula and now I can very easily just uh, convert this uh, into the value. So, just we put the value. So, it's given that inside temperature was 57 degrees Celsius. That's 273 plus 57 Kelvin. And outside temperature was uh, 0 degrees Celsius. That's 273 Kelvin. And then uh, inside, outside pressure was 100 kilopascal. So, just uh, you put in the values, you get 109.94 kilopascal. And that's approximately 110 kilopascal. Okay. So, that brings us to the end of this analysis and I, I sure you, I'm sure you enjoyed this uh, uh, a little non-conventional problem uh, on uh, thermodynamics or kinetic theory and if you did like this uh, uh, presentation, please do give a thumbs up to my video and uh, please uh, share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever medium you might be using for networking with the fellow students preparing for IITJ or Olympiads. And most importantly, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel right now because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.